And now, Dr. Tokumbo along with Dami, joins us from Oxford Brookes University in the UK. Thank you for being with us on News Across Nigeria. Uh, thank you, Lumide, for having me. Let's begin with the leadership of the 10th National Assembly. Now, there are schools of thought that believe that zoning should be a factor given the recent outcome of the general elections, uh, where the president and the vice president uh, come from different parts of the country but are of the similar faith. There's also the school of thought that believes that experience plays a major factor because of the type of role and the type of responsibilities that a president of the National Assembly should have. Now, what is, in your view, is um, where, in your view, do you think uh, the 10th National Assembly should lean as far as appointing the Senate president? I think, um, thank you, Lumide. I wish I could just spin that crystal ball and tell you, go here and pick a Senate president from there. But you see, there are a number of predetermining factors that are already cast in stone. For example, as you mentioned, where the president is from, where the vice president is from, and then the issue of faith. These factors are important to the Nigerian experience, and they must, they must inform where, who, and how the Senate president or the speaker and the general leadership of the House of Assembly uh, is determined. Um, you should also consider the fact that the legislature is one of the key legs on which our democratic entity stands. And by so defining, you will find that we need to ensure that there's a robust, well-enriched you know, component within that uh, National Assembly to also do their own job as they should. Uh, the country right now needs leadership at any level at all, uh, particularly at the National Assembly. So these factors, for, for example, the regional factors, the issue of faith will determine very strongly. Um, I, as a person, given a chance to say select somebody, I'll be looking at competence, somebody who can enrich democracy in a way that all the three key uh, contributors to democratic experience have a role to play and they're playing it well. They're checkmating each other and balancing power as they should so that that's the extent of abuse of power is reduced you know, to a very minimal, uh, minute level. It seems to me that the sides calling for fair representation and those calling for the best man for the job, as far as experience is concerned, quality and character, both have uh, sound arguments. Yes, yes, very much so. Very much so. These are two key components of the divide that you need to bring in to make a decision. Uh, the president-elect will want somebody who can enhance whatever they will be doing at the center. As an executive, um, I'm sure they will want somebody they can work with. But then in fairness and in the spirit of justice and equity, you want to also ensure that the entire uh, country is carried along in a way you've consulted well and ensure that there's fair representation. You don't want to lump power to one side of the divide and then leave other parts exposed. So to get that equity uh, represented in this government, I am pretty sure that, um, you know, uh, that these two factors will come uh, together to form, uh, you know, whatever decision will um, um, be the decider for who becomes the next leader of the National Assembly. And they are critical points. You can't push this to your side. Uh, this, this is a country where you know that the different sides are active. And, um, you know, at, at this point, it's, it's becoming a source of concern how power is shared, how, how Nigeria is together, and, uh, and the level of division along tribal, religious, and other sentiment party lines. At this point, you need somebody who can unify, uh, you know, with the executive and the judiciary. But where do you lean personally as far as this is concerned? Uh, personally, I think the, the first point for me, the first place of, of, of call for me will be uh, competence. Uh, we need somebody for a change, somebody who is well vast in, in that act of legislation, you know, and um, the second will be uh, what I just uh, finished discussing, the issue of equity and fairness and justice. Um, so I would go to the southeast if you ask me, because I think um, 
that is where the pendulum will swing generally getting somebody from the southeast and then somebody who is of a different faith from the president and, and his vice would sort of bring about that balance and that sense of belonging uh, for for the whole country doctor are you happy with the way the elections have turned out now we have more representation from other parties aside from the ruling party and the opposition party at the national assembly and do you think they will be able to do a lot for their constituents i am i am happy that we're seeing um something different it's not it's not um it's not almost as though it was business as usual where anybody who comes from a particular party can start celebrating already. This diverse mix um, can be a problem. It can also be uh, a very good um, a very good development for our democracy. It therefore means that your the, you know the, the National Assembly is a lot more inclusive and the level of subjectivity and inclusion across party lines, you will, you will see that will enrich political formul formulation, will enrich you know, national unity and, and the bringing of different thoughts and opinion together, which is, which is critical to, to, to birthing a legislature or legislation that can, that can be said to represent the interests of the whole country. Uh, when you have just these two parties doing what they want because they're the dominant factors then it becomes a bit like um, of a family that is just one house in an estate determining the entire uh, lot of the, 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 the entire estate. So this will enrich democracy. It is good. I'm happy about it, but we're not, we're not, we're not there yet. Finally, what's your view on legislation at the National Assembly? Um, it's been criticized as being slow in many regards concerning these issues that are dear to the hearts of the constituents and also the cost of running the National Assembly? Yes, the issue of cost, uh, I'll pick that first because it's become a very problematic issue for us as a country, looking at how much is spent and what impact you know, the legislation is, is making. As per the slowness or the quickness, I think it's about the process. They need to sit properly. They need to sit through all their different sittings to get an agreement. And then, you know, you need to remove and add and then get assent. It looks like a slow process, but that is the process that works in a democracy. What I would rather want to see is more energized, action packed legislations that will shift the way. Uh, the country runs, the way we do business, uh, that will impact the ordinary people. Those are the kind of legislations I would expect to see in the Stent Assembly. You know, uh, one that will really, really be a paradigm shift, one that will impact society, that will change dimensionally how we do business, how we live our life and push things forward, make things better, you know, for the country. Otherwise, we'll keep looking at the legislature as if, as if it's just an arm of government that people just go and sit down and, you know, people don't really feel the impact as they should. Well, thank you, Doctor. As they say, it's become a cliche, but time will tell when the 10th National Assembly starts sitting. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Tokumbo Olarundami from Oxford Brooks University in the UK. Thank you for having me.